Hey guys, what's up? By Seth Detron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today I'm giving you guys 10 tips for base building, specifically 10 things not to do when you're building your base, and these apply to most town hall levels. Some of these are going to be a little specific to certain town halls, but pretty much any level, um, a lot of these are going to apply to town hall 9, 10, 11 especially. So hopefully this video will give you guys an idea of what not to do when you're building your base because I often talk about what to do, but there's also some things you should avoid uh, that are very important. I'm going to have some uh, examples up on the screen as we go just for certain things that have to be demonstrated visually, but otherwise we'll have some nice background attacks for you guys to take a look at. Um, first one is going to be exposing your Archer Queen, um, especially at Town Hall 10. Right now, Suicide Hero La Loon is very popular, um, as well as other attacks that just use like the heroes and a very, very small kill squad to try to take out your queen and then use defense targeting troops like hogs or loons um, on the rest of the base in very large numbers. So you got to be careful about that. Um, keep your queen very protected um, on current bases. I think that's the new defensive meta. You have the example there of the base that I'm currently running. I can't show the traps, of course. Um, but that, that's the idea. Keep the queen protected towards the core right next to the CC if you can. That seems to be what, what's working right now. Um, the next one is regarding spring traps and giant bombs. This applies to pretty much any town hall level. You want to put your spring traps where they're going to drop your, their heal spells, and you want to put the giant bombs where they're not going to drop the heal spells. So oftentimes people will have um, a setup on their base where they have like a bunch of defenses and it's a place an attacker is going to drop a heal anyway. Maybe there's like a 2x2 two two, like wizard tower, expo, archer tower, cannon. Someone's going to drop a heal spell anywhere. Having a giant bomb is not going to help because if the hogs are under heal, a single giant bomb, even a double giant bomb, isn't going to hurt those hogs that much. So it's important that um, you put spring traps in that area and then put the giant bombs maybe towards the outside of the base where there's only like two defenses in places where hogs are still going to go, but they're not going to um, be ready to heal at that point. They're going to be trying to use their heals in the middle of the base. So that way, the heals aren't effective because spring traps don't um, care about heals. They just fling off the hogs. So that's a great way to defend hogs. Be a little careful. Don't do this too much because the giant bombs are helpful, helpful for hurting the kill squad as well. So you can't have all your giant bombs in weird spots uh, where there's only like one or two defenses. Keep a few in the core, but the bomb towers are good at hurting the kill squads anyway. Um, Giant bombs, focus them in places where they're not they're not gonna want to use a heal spell. You can either force a heal or hurt the hogs and have them go to like half health without a heal to get them back up. Okay, moving on to the next one here. Um, don't put your king near the queen, especially if it's gonna get otherwise good value for um, a kill squad um, in terms of a hog attack. So what I mean by that is, especially at Town Hall 10, you don't want to let the king and the queen get taken out um, on a, for a hog attack because the king is so good at defending against hogs, especially a level 40 king. Uh, but this does apply to Town Hall 9 as well. The idea is if you're going to keep your king and your queen somewhat close to each other, and if the queen's in the middle, it's hard to keep the king that far away from her. But you want to make sure that if it's an attacker is going to come for both your heroes, they're not going to also neutralize spring traps or a lot of giant bombs, bomb towers, stuff that's good against hogs. Because the king is a very valuable asset, and if you put him right next to the queen and there's a nice convenient kill squad, your base is going to get wrecked by hogs probably. So make sure um, whatever path the attacker has to take to get both your heroes is not going to be a favorable one um, in terms of using hogs on the rest of the base. <clears throat> okay, um... Another big mistake people make is at Town Hall 10, and I'm going to have some more Town Hall 9, a lot of these are Town Hall 10 at the beginning. Um, at Town Hall 10, keeping the air defenses away from your single infernos. Now most people, of course, are using single infernos, and they are very good at getting lava hounds. A big mistake people make is they put their air defenses away from the single infernos, um, but that's going to make it too easy to laloon your base. The Infernos aren't that good against Loons, they're good against breaking up the Hounds. So keep three, if not all, of your air defenses in range of your single Infernos. That way you'll get some good value um, and you'll be able to uh, get those Lava Hounds busted and then the Balloons will start to get targeted once the Lava Hounds are down. 
Uh, there are exceptions, but typically I like to keep my uh, air defenses in range of the single infernos. Okay, this next one, um, I'm going to put an example up just so we're all clear. I've talked about this a lot, so I won't dwell on it too much. Make sure your expos especially are not able to be walked by a queen along the outside of the base. So that's the ideal distance you want. Um, the four tiles between the expo and the wall, this is pretty much review stuff if you guys watch my channel a lot. Uh, this applies to other point defense as well, but especially the expos. With a few exceptions, you want to keep those expos in a good spot to defend queen walks. Don't put them too close to the outside of the base. They're too valuable of a defense, unless you're going for a very advanced technique. Um, but typically, just kind of go with the expos in the traditional spots. Okay, um, this one is something that I think will help a lot of people, often um, overlooked. Um, your red air bombs, we all know you don't want to put them next to your air defenses because the lava hounds soak them up and they do pretty much no damage to lava hounds whereas balloons they have that nice splash damage taking out about a quarter of balloons health so the red air bombs are important you want to make sure that they hit the loons so as a result we always keep them away from the air defenses we put them in spots where there's wizard towers but you got to be careful when a lava hound explodes the lava pups can trigger those red air bombs which is why you not only want to make sure the red air bomb its range does not extend over the air defense, but also keep it additionally farther away, so that way the pups, when the lava hound explodes, the pups won't um, fly out and trigger all those traps. A good rule of thumb is to look at the range of the air defense and make sure within that like 10 tile radius, there's no red air bombs. That's a pretty big range, so it might only apply to a few of your red air bombs, but try to make, especially your most valuable ones, very, very far from air defenses, because if they are like a medium distance, those pups can trigger it, and you don't want your red air bombs hitting like one lava pup. You want them to hit the balloons, of course, so be careful about that. A lot of exploding pups have uh, ruined some air traps for people. Okay, next one, this is going to be um, another one for La Lune. Um, and also applies to pretty much any town hall level like the last one. Don't have your Teslas right next to each other. Now, I, I'm a big fan of Tesla farms. I also like troll Teslas, by the way. But you don't want to make a Tesla farm that has Teslas basically touching each other. Because that way the balloons, um, depending on the angle, can take both of them out in one balloon drop. They do that splash damage, remember. That's why occasionally you'll see a balloon take out like an army camp as it drops on a defense right next to it. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So you got to make sure that you're not going to put your Teslas, which are a very small building, like right next to another Tesla, because oftentimes you'll get that um, splash taking out both. The same thing applies to regular defenses as well. If there's a Tesla and like an Archer Tower, you run the risk, depending on the angle, of them both getting hit by the same loon drop. So just be careful about that. Keep your defenses spread out. It's not good to have them touching anyway for Valks and stuff. So. Um, one tile is good, that way you can also put spring traps, and if it's two tiles, you can fit a giant bomb between defenses. So just kind of keep that distance, don't have, it's a good rule in general not to have defenses touching each other, but especially not Teslas, because of the loon drops. Okay, um, what else do we have here? Uh, this next one I have an example for, I'll throw up on the screen. You don't want to have a base where you can have a bunch of defenses all be targeted by defense targeting troops. So when people deploy balloons or hogs, they deploy them obviously from the outside of the base and they target an initial defense. If you have too many of these little um, anchors, so to speak, for them to drop a group of balloons or a group of hogs on, it makes it very easy to kind of overwhelm your base, especially with balloons. So that's why mortars are so effective because they basically clump up balloons. If you have mortars on the outside of your base, um, here's the example, same base um, once again. You can see we have defenses towards the outside, not just mortars, but a few others, making it so there's only a few places on each side of the base where they can directly target defenses. It makes the pathing take longer, less effective at getting into the base. So that's something you definitely want to think about when you're building your base, is making sure they can't just basically spam a wall of balloons and target five different defenses because um, that'll make the balloons work way too efficiently. And the same goes for hogs, not as much, but it does apply to hogs as well somewhat. Okay, this one's a simple one for Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, uh, but oftentimes people still do it. Don't put um, a trash building next to a mortar where you can boulder bounce off the building onto the mortar. So anything that's not like an army camp or a builder hut has too many hit points and if a uh, mortar is lined up, the bowler will take out that and get the mortar as well with the second bounce. So just make sure 
if the mortar is not guarded by like an archer tower or a building like that, that you don't, and you can see the example here, that you uh, you don't put the trash building in a place where it can be easily bounced. So oftentimes, put your army camps, they have less hit points than the mortar, so that you, they can't bounce. Um, the bowler will move on before the mortar goes down. Put the army camps, put builder's huts, or just um, put extra buildings to kind of layer over the, the mortar. But uh, a six troop space investment, people will often trade that for your mortar, as well as for a funnel typically. So don't give them the luxury of bowler bouncing your mortar, um, as you can see in the setup there. All right, last one. You want to avoid going too heavy on double or triple seeking air mines. And the reason being, oftentimes a lava hound with a little bit of HP left will go to a air defense and trigger every seeking air mine on it. And it's a waste if three seeking air mines all hop up and take out that lava hound that only has like a fifth of its health left. So instead, try to keep them one per air defense, maybe double up on one or two that you suspect will be hit with La Loon and not taken out by a kill squad or a queen or something. So uh, just avoid, especially the triple seeking air mine. It's excessive. It's not going to do much for you. Um, I think oftentimes I'll even put a, a seeking air mine away from my air defenses to take out like possibly a baby dragon for a funnel or to guard a Tesla I have on the outside of the base, something like that. I, I won't even always put all five of them um, at Town Hall 10 by my air defenses. So just be aware of that. Try to keep them single on uh, your air defenses, especially with single infernos. It's easier to take out lava hounds. There's no point stacking them up. It's just a waste. So one per air defense tends to work. Maybe a few doubles, but no triples, uh, generally speaking. All right, that's all the tips. Hope those 10 helped you guys. Um, now you know things to avoid when you're building your base. Be sure to check out my other base building videos on my channel if you want to learn more. And uh, I'll see you guys soon in another video. Got our first week of CWL coming up as I record this, so should be fun. You guys should see some content from that, and I will talk to you guys in a very soon video to come. Bisectatron out.